What can trolls tell us about democracy? In this video, we'll explore how a 10-page chapter from The Hobbit can give us a fundamental insight into group decision-making. So, inspired by The Hobbit movies, let's unnecessarily split this video up into three parts and go on a journey. <laughs> The Hobbit is the story of Bilbo and Twelve Dwarves and their quest to kill a dragon. But this video is not about them. It is about the three trolls they meet early on in their journey. William, Tom, and Bert. They might have silly names by troll standards, but they're a threat. Now that's a supper. They manage to capture Bilbo and the dwarves and immediately start to discuss how to cook them. Now, high quality culinary discussion is not something we usually associate with trolls. But this discussion is important. Cooking 12 dwarves is a lot of work. Whether you want to roast them, boil them, or squash them to jelly, you need all hands on deck to do the job. This means the trolls have to follow one single plan. How do you get a group to follow a single plan? Middle Earth is full of dark lords, kings, and princes. Then it's easy. Whoever wears the crown gets to decide. But this group of trolls does not have a king. Instead, they rely on a crude form of democracy to make decisions. Or, as Bert describes it, You're the one, so shut your mouth! And they need to decide quick, because if they're not done cooking before dawn, the trolls will turn into stone. Is troll democracy up to the task? Spoiler alert! Nope. They are unable to choose between the different cooking methods and fight over the merits of each option until the sun rises. Why do they fail to decide? Is it because they're stupid? No. It is because of a fundamental problem with democracy. What do I mean by democracy? Not taxation and representation, not civil liberties, not checks and balances. I mean democracy in its most basic, direct form. Doing what the people want taking individual opinions about what is best, tallying the vote, and whatever gets a majority is what the group does. And what if the loser disagrees? You the one, so shut your mouth! From the chapter, we know there are four methods to cook dwarf. Having them raw, roasting them, boiling them, or squashing them and eating them as dwarf jelly. We also get enough information to figure out what the culinary palates of the individual trolls are. Let's start with what they like as individuals, and then use that to figure out what they want as a group. First up is Bert, the cook of the group. Number one for him is roasted dwarf. Number two is jelly. Number three is boiling them. Because of problems with this group of dwarves... He's got worms in his... tubes. Leaving them uncooked is his least favorite option. Second is William, the intellectual. His favorite is boiling dwarf. His number two is roasting them. Squashing them comes in third. Having them raw... They're infested with parasites, it's a terrible business. ...is obviously his last choice. And then finally, Tom. Tom's an idiot, even by troll standards. His first choice is to squash the dwarves, boiling comes second, roasting third, and finally, even he knows... I've got parasites as big as my arm! ...not to eat raw dwarf. If it was up to the individual trolls, deciding would be easy. They would just pick their number one. But what about the group as a whole? That turns out to be quite a bit harder. Right now, the dwarves are uncooked. But look at the trolls' preferences. They all hate raw dwarf. So, when Bert proposes to roast them instead, all three trolls agree. Roasting is clearly better than having them raw. And since all three trolls rank Raw Dwarf last, it is clearly the worst option and can be ignored from now on. Time for the real showdown. Is roasting, boiling, or squashing the best choice for the group? Right now, they've picked roasting. Then an argument breaks out. Is Boiled Dwarf not a better option? Let's see. Bert still prefers roasting, but both Tom and William rank boiling higher than roasting. In the end, there's one vote for roasting and two for boiling. So, boiling wins this round. However, the fighting is not over yet. Boiling still needs to square off against the last alternative, jelly. And as you can see, two of the trolls prefer jelly. We have a new top choice. But here's the kicker. Jelly loses to roasting, two to one. 
the trolls are back to their original choice, roasting. And so the argument began all over again. Why? Because as we saw, Roasted Dwarf gets beaten by Boiling, Boiling gets beaten by Jelly, and Jelly gets defeated by Roasting. And so the cycle continues. None of the options can defeat all the others. Now, the endless arguing makes sense. Even though the individual trolls have perfectly coherent opinions about how Dwarf should be prepared, using majority rule to figure out what the group wants is impossible. This is a fundamental problem of democracy. Sometimes groups cannot decide. As soon as three voters get into a room and try to pick between three alternatives, a cycle can occur. And the more people, or the more options, the higher the chance majority rule fails. Keep this in mind next time you're arguing with your friends over what to eat and how to cook it. Then how do groups make decisions in cases like this? Sometimes they will behave like the trolls in The Hobbit and bicker until the bitter end. How can you avoid the same fate? That is what the next video will be about. Hey, thanks for watching. The ideas in this video are also known as the Condorcet Paradox, and I wrote a little blog post explaining these ideas a little bit more formally, so go and check that out if you're interested. And I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed, and especially shared the video. Thank you.